What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Tim Sports Talk. And today we're talking about should the Washington football team go after this guy, the bad man, Aaron Rodgers. And there's two schools of thought, right? And one school is, nope, let's stand pat. And let's build our team through the draft, and we're going to build a continuous winner for years to come. The other school of thought is we are a team ready to win today, ready to win this year, but we are a quarterback away from doing so. And it's really what what are you looking for that picks your side? But what if there's a way that you could potentially do both? And let's take a look here first. So, Bleacher Report proposes a trade from the Broncos, though, because nobody wants to talk about us potentially getting them. It's all about the Broncos for some reason, even though they have a nice young quarterback in Drew Locke, but that's neither here nor there. But the Broncos trade package that the Bleacher Report is thinking about is two first-round picks and a second, but... They said that that's probably not where it'll land. That's just going to where it starts. And the more likely to be a three first-round picks and maybe more. Now, would you trade three first-round picks for Aaron Rodgers? Some of you may immediately say, no, he's too old. Why would you do that, right? Well, he's only 37. Tom Brady is, what, 44, 45? Three firsts for a potential seven, eight years of a legit starting quarterback is not a bad deal, right? Especially of one of an MVP calendar or caliber. He literally just won it a year ago. Last season, six months ago, he was awarded this the MVP award. He had 48 touchdowns and five interceptions, 4,300 yards with an incredible record. I think they were number two in the... I think they were number one. Actually, they may have been number one in the NFC. I don't remember now. But still, a top team in the NFC, this guy was the quarterback. I Personally, I'm going back and forth on it, right? Because I know that next year is a pretty deep, young quarterback class, but none of them are guaranteed to be Aaron Rodgers' level, right? Uh, you're risking it. Now, you are keeping your picks, and you're going to get a nice young quarterback that you're going to be paying a lot less money, but then again, you're putting yourself behind the eight ball if he does not turn out to be a top half of the league quarterback even, right? He doesn't need to be Aaron Rodgers with this roster, but you got to still hit on the quarterback no matter who you draft. Aaron Rodgers, he's relatively healthy through the years. I know he had that season where he missed uh, quite a bit, but overall, he's a pretty healthy individual. He's obviously a beast. 48 touchdowns, 5 interceptions just last year. Uh, and I am going... So, and then the other thing is... Sorry, let me go into this. Is another big reason people aren't in on this is because this contract shows a guy that is worth... Or that it's going to need to be paid $37 million. If we pull up his contract, and that's just next season. I think it's even more the year after that. Let's see here. Contract breakdown here. Yeah, so this year it's a thirty-seven million. Then it's almost forty million after that, and then twenty-eight point three the following year. And a lot of people love this young D line that's going to need to be like need to get paid, right? You're gonna have to pay these dudes. So not only are you running out of cap space to be able to pay your young players that you want to keep, now you're getting rid of a bunch of firsts that you can't use to replenish them. But if they have a draft like they did this year and the drafts that they've been having if you keep hitting on these later round guys the first round picks are the ha they the first round picks have been important don't get me wrong of course Jonathan Allen Chase Young Montez Sweat the first round picks Deron Payne have been extremely important to have but you also get guys like Cam Curl Cole Holcomb uh, Antonio Gibson uh who else is there? I'm sure there's other ones you could even throw out there, but uh, and we'll see maybe this year of Diami Brown maybe is getting a lot of hype. Benjamin St. Juice is getting a lot of hype. So you're also including later round picks that have been panning out for this team, and it's not only about the first round pick. Like Matt Ioannidis is arguably one of our better defensive linemen, and he was a fifth round pick out of Temple. So our fourth round pick, one or the other, late round, mid-round mid pick. 
was Matt Ioannidis. So this is a fair argument because I hate to pay one player this much money. I do. I just I don't like it. But a lot of your talent right now is on rookie contracts that are you know being underpaid compared to what they're playing at. And so if you throw a lot of this money at an Aaron Rodgers type player, it's it's so so tempting. Man, there's so many angles at this because now you could also start going to talk about his attitude, right? Like his attitude off the field and it's like he's not showing up for training camp. He seems to have an ego. He had problems with Mike McCarthy in the past. Uh, now he has problems with this GM. I don't know if he has so much problems with Matt LaFleur, the head coach, but the GM he's having big, big problems with. And some people may look at that and say, oh, like that's he's a problem child. He's It sucks. But the thing is you don't hear a lot of – like players hate on him right like you don't hear a lot of players upset um you have people like uh, old players like aj hawk and pat mcafee bring him on a show and all they do is talk positive about him so you got to kind of look at does aaron Rodgers have a point when he says something and what he could be is very blunt so he doesn't hide his emotions well well maybe not in the public but clearly not behind the scenes he does not hide his you know, he doesn't have a poker face kind of thing. He wears his emotions right on his face, right? So, does he have a point to be upset? I mean, look how bad Mike McCarthy and the Cowboys were last year. Even with Dak Prescott, they could talk about him all they want. They were 1-3 before he got hurt. 1-3. in three. And they should have been 0-4. Oh they should have lost to Atlanta if Atlanta wasn't so, so bad. Um, against us, that was one of the worst play calls, that fourth and whatever, where he tried to do a fake reversal thing and they ended up losing 15 yards. Terrible decision. Terrible play. Mike McCarthy, was he actually that good of a coach or did he win a Super Bowl because he's on the back of Aaron Rodgers and a young Aaron Rodgers at that who was a freak of nature? Then, fast forward to now, you have this GM. Does he have a right to be angry? You are one game away, one game away from the Super Bowl. And you have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And you have a running back who just came on the scene and tore it up. And... And that's another thing about Mike McCarthy, just just a little quick side note. He refused to use Aaron Jones. As soon as Mike McCarthy left, now Aaron Jones is like a top five fantasy running back, right? He's just being a beast. But you have Aaron Jones and you have Aaron Rodgers. What does Green Bay do the year after they got to the NFC Championship? They draft a quarterback. And then the second round, they draft a running back. Bro, I have only Devontae Adams. Can we get a receiver maybe? Can we make a move on Justin Jefferson? Or make a move on so one of these? I mean, who else was in that one? I don't even remember who. Was it like, uh, I don't remember who, which receivers now could they could have picked. But I'm sure there was out there, some out there. Don't get me wrong. I think Michael Pittman Jr. was in that one who's been good for the Colts. Anyway, can I get a receiver? Can I get some more defensive help? Can I get a great edge rusher or something? Can I get uh, more offensive line help? Can I do something other than a backup quarterback? as if we're rebuilding or something now, and a running back who are a dime a dozen that you could find great running backs in the fourth, fifth, and sixth round? Why are we drafting? Why are we desperate to draft a running back in the second round when we have Aaron Jones? And then, on top of that, you go and pay Aaron Jones right after. So now, it's not like you planned on, oh, let's move on from Aaron Jones and I want to get his successor. No, you paid Aaron Jones to stay. So these kind of things, does Aaron Rodgers actually have a legitimate grievance here. An argu- I, I don't think it's really arguable. I think, of course, he does. What he's been given is ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, it's not terrible, I guess, because you have Devontae Adams, you do have Aaron Jones, you do have... They did spend a lot of money on their defense, but it's still key decisions from the front office that are screwing him over, right? And they're so close because he's so freaking talented... But then their defense gets destroyed by the Niners, right? Or the, uh, the oh my God, and then the play calling against Tampa Bay. Why are you putting one of the best receivers in the slot so he can get triple teamed? And then Aaron Rodgers is trying to go to his best player, but he's in the slot. You had the uh, corner right on top of him. You had the safety over top, and then you had the linebacker in the middle. He is triple teamed. This is one of the best receivers in the league. One of the best back shoulder 
receivers at that, and you have one of the best back shoulder throwers in Aaron Rodgers. Why is Devontae Adams not on the outside, at least getting one, maybe two on out of three plays, going back shoulder? And it's three plays in a row they put Devontae Adams in the slot. Then, on top of that, you're down by seven with like two and a half minutes to go, and you kick a field goal. You have to go for it on fourth down. Have to. You have to go inside the tent. You have to go for the fourth down there because then even if you don't get it, you can get the stop and then you go for the tie anyway. This idea that you're going to kick a field goal and then get a stop and then try to win it, that was stupid. So poor decision-making there by the head coach to go for the field goal, right? Even Tom Brady made a meme about it. So I believe that Aaron Rodgers has legitimate grievances. I believe that... He's obviously a fantastic quarterback. I think he's worth the money in our situation because we have so much talent on rookie deals, a la Terry McLaurin, a la Deron Payne, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, uh, Cam Curl now. Uh, who else is there? I mean, there's probably Antonio Gibson's on a rookie deal. You have so much talent on rookie contracts. So spending extra money on a quarterback is not the end of the world because of that kind of situation, right? Then... There is the so I mentioned earlier that maybe we could do both, right? Because I said there was either the long term answer or the short term answer. And me and Chris was on the Chris and Tim podcast and we were talking about this where Chris mentioned if we win in the next year or two, that may in- influence a guy like Deron Payne, a guy like Chase Young, Montez Sweat, kind of taking team friendly deals on a year-to-year basis to keep it under the cap space so that we could try to become a dynasty. And you have a great guy to also influence that in Ron Rivera. Very down-to-earth dude, very to the point, and he's also very uh, team uh, player-friendly, but yet he's not a pushover. He's a great head coach, a great leader of men. So there's an argument that if we go after a guy like Aaron Rodgers, we could have him for seven, eight years, and then that could turn into team-friendly deals potentially from the uh, defensive players that we want to keep. And Aaron Rodgers, maybe in this kind of situation, will also take a team-friendly deal late in his career where then he wants to just win a couple more championships. Aaron Rodgers, for three first-round picks, it sounds outrageous when you say that, right? It sounds outrageous. But this ain't RG3. This ain't a rookie that's an unknown that you don't know about. This guy is obviously legit, a three-time MVP, a Super Bowl champion, multiple trips to the NFC Championship game. Dude, I say give this guy, go after it. Make the move. Ryan Fitzpatrick ain't it. Taylor Heineke, you know, I love what he did in the playoff game, but you don't know if he's going to stay healthy, and he's an undersized dude. You, I love his athleticism. I love his arm. I think I'm leaning towards let's go after Aaron Rodgers, send the draft picks, let's win a Super Bowl this year because we would be immediate favorites on this team. You, you're joking. You're, you're putting your head in the sand if you don't think that the Redskins are an immediate, immediate Super Bowl contenders, if not favorites, especially favorites coming out of this conference, the NFC. Tampa Bay, move on over. Uh, Seattle, no way. Rams, nope. Yeah, like This team is clearly better than all of those guys. We just start lacking a quarterback. And if we get that kind of quarterback, we're there. We, we built the team. We're there. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And who knows? The freaking cap may explode i'm hearing tv deals may explode the cap next year so this 40 million dollar contract for aaron Rodgers might look like nothing may just be maybe a smaller much maybe looks like 30 million dollars this year instead of a 37 right there's so much to this there's so much reasons why i think it's actually the best idea even though if you watch you know i hate paying somebody that much money i hate it but in our scenario, he's only a $28 million cap hit in his last year, which would be pennies for a guy like Aaron Rodgers. And he'd be, what, 40 years old? He's 37, so next year would be 38. He'd only be 39 years old, three years off of an MVP. Who knows, he may do it again this year. Let's make the move, guys. Let's make the move. And, hey, 
You guys let me know what you guys think about in the comments below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Also, in the description below, there's a Discord link. Hop in our Discord and come talk some football. And last but not least, there are donation links in the description below. If you feel so kind, you could donate to the channel. And until next time, see ya!